Hello and welcome to the Monday, May 6, 2024 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. We'll actually not be recording from Jacksonville, Florida the next couple of weeks. Next few days I'll be at RSA. We'll do a learning lab on Tuesday, Jason Lamb and myself. And then on Wednesday, of course, our annual panel. So if you're at RSA. Hope to see some of you there. Always will have some stickers on me in case uh, someone needs a couple of internet storm center stickers. Just uh, stop me when you run into me. Later in the week, I'll be heading to San Diego to teach the Defending Web Applications class. If you're interested in the class, well, a sans fire coming up. And yes, you'll be able to attend it in person. So if you're interested in attending it in person, sign up at sans fire. But let's take a quick look at diaries. DDA this weekend wrote about using NS Lookup to debug DNS issues. NS Lookup has a number of interesting and very verbose debug options. So that's what DDA is covering here. Personally, I'm more of a dig fan versus NS Lookup. But then again, I don't really touch Windows much. And on Windows, you usually have NS Lookup installed by default. This reminded me to maybe do a couple more DNS diaries this week. If there's any specific topic that you're interested in, let me know. And talking about DNS, uh, Microsoft published on Friday an interesting blog post announcing what they call Zero Trust DNS. Zero Trust DNS will currently be in private preview, but it's expected to show up in future versions of Windows. What they're really trying to accomplish here is extending some of the concepts of zero trusts where you're only able to connect to certain resources to DNS, which of course has been tricky in the past. By default, an operating system will typically connect to a recursive resolver that was assigned via DHCP or some other means. And of course, that's often ISP's recursive resolver. Also, DNS traffic by default is not encrypted and only ever so often authenticated via DNSSEC. I actually ran into this uh, last week myself with uh, Xfinity and Comcast, essentially uh, intercepting all DNS traffic. Even if you specify a DNS server that's not operated by Xfinity. So what they're trying to do now is that as part of your mobile device management, the Windows client will receive a Serotrust DNS configuration. That's essentially a list of trusted DNS server that will only be connected to via DNS over TLS or DNS over HTTPS. So as an administrator, you'll be able to configure uh, these trusted DNS servers since they're using a TLS uh, to transmit queries and responses. Any ISP and such will no longer be able to play their machine in the middle tricks. In addition, they will also restrict what IP addresses you'll be able to connect to without having them first being resolved via one of these trusted DNS servers. Malware, of course, sometimes uh, to evade uh, DNS detection is just connecting to an IP address directly, but uh, these attempts will be blocked. So for example, you may still allow connections to the local network. That's often required like you know, to your RFC 1918 space where you don't necessarily use host names, but you connect by IP address directly. But for anything else, you first need to have the IP address being returned from a trusted DNS server. And of course, that trusted DNS server is then expected to do some filtering. Interesting concept. Again, this is in preview at this point. So uh, take a look at it and uh, see how well it works for you. Now, given all these security precautions, how is your poor average hacker still able to then communicate with compromised systems? Well, uh, Microsoft has a solution for them, and that's the Microsoft Craft API. The Microsoft Craft API is used to interact with Microsoft cloud resources, like most notably Microsoft OneDrive, and of course, because many Microsoft Windows systems will regularly use the Microsoft Graph API. 
This uses host names that are typically allowed by your protective DNS solution. Various malware has been spotted using this graph API as a command and control channel, just like any other cloud resource and such, of course, always attractive because it is so difficult to then block list this unless you specifically inspect the traffic going forth back to these cloud resources. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.